Vitality is our ability to have spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical bliss. Some call it paradise. We call it a game. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Ice, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, Femininity Coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So I got a little something for you today that I want to show you. It's a real short clip, and we're going to talk about it because um, shout out to Anton Daniels. He talked a little bit about the gender war too and some of its effects and this is starting to be a, a little bit more of a conversation but it's kind of cap but i'll show you what i'm talking about let me go ahead and share my screen and then we're gonna come back and we are going to cook call me a conspiracy theorist but don't nobody else find it weird that right after roe versus wade was overturned because they was presumably one race of women one having enough babies and then the other race of women was having too many babies all of a sudden it's a full-blown fucking gender war between black men and women all across social media it's not being flagged it's not being stopped it's not being flagged for inappropriateness they just letting it ride and how covert of a form of birth control is that you ain't got to worry about getting no abortions, bitches, because y'all ain't about to be getting pregnant. Why y'all ain't about to be getting pregnant? Because y'all men hate y'all and y'all hate y'all men. Boom. We ain't got to do shit. Y'all going to do it for y'all self. And then second of all, I don't know about nobody else's city, but I live in Chicago. Black men are dying in droves, like literally. And in this city, you can't even go over the speed limit by five fucking miles unless you get your whole life sent to you in the mail via picture. You mean to tell me y'all can't find these boys that's supposedly out here killing each other? Call me a... Now, let me go ahead and stop sharing. She's not lying, but I'm calling Cap anyway. Just because things need to be clarified. Because one thing that black women will do, and I'm not necessarily accusing her of her specifically, but one thing that black women will do will turn a narrative and spin a narrative and start a narrative to sway things a certain kind of way. And it's not realistic and it's not true. Here's what I mean. She was trying to correlate the blow up of social media gender war with the Roe v. Wade overturning. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Let's talk a little bit about Roe v. Wade. Who was having the most abortions? Black women. Actually, part of the gender war was y'all abortion rate. That was actually part of the gender war. Let's talk about it. The gender war did not begin just now at the, with the advent of social media. Okay? It did not. The gender war began primarily with second and third wave feminism that black women took and adopted. And, it, you know, y'all really embodied all of the foolishness that feminism actually was. Old school media, before there was a social media, before there was a Facebook, before there was an Instagram, before there was a Twitter, before there was a YouTube, before y'all start dancing in the street when brother Kevin Samuels passed away. There was Oprah, there was Jenny Jones, there was Ricky Lake, there was Sally Jesse Raphael. There was all of these talk shows that black women frequented to talk crap and talk mess about who black men were, how dirty black men was treating black women, how irresponsible black men were, how unworthy to be men that they were, how they couldn't lead the community and black women had to lead the community and all of that type of thing, you know, because how black me, how black women had to lead the community because black men were not you know, manly enough or masculine enough or intelligent enough 
or worthy enough to actually do something, to actually lead their families and communities. And that's why black communities was falling apart and families was falling apart because it was all black men's fault. Black women had no accountability. They was just being innocent, wonderful, perfect women that was perfectly feminine and perfectly wanted to be wives and mothers and things of that nature. But it was them low down, dirty dog men that could not hold it together, that could not deal with a family, that did not want to be responsible as men. That was the narrative. Black women believe whatever is on TV. So even if she's not that's not her lived experience. If Oprah come on at nine o'clock in the morning and she say black men ain't nothing and black women got to suffer and all that kind of stuff, then the women in the, in the, in, at home in the audience, because it was white women in that audience and it was black women at home sucking it up, sucking it up, then that is what became true in black culture. And black women said whatever they wanted to say without any restraint, nobody canceled nobody or nothing like that. Black women could come out and say whatever they wanted to say about black men and nobody said anything. Social media only like displayed it in a way that it had not been displayed before. Instead of just the women who might have been given the spotlight for one reason or another, it was your everyday black woman that was able to get online and express her disdain, express her contempt, express her disrespect, express her misandry, and express her hatred of black men. Black women became more and more vitriolic. They became more hateful. They became more disrespectful. And they were allowed to spew that hatred and that vitriol unchecked by any social media platform. It is not common for black women to have their channels and their platforms and their accounts stricken down and flagged and all of that type of stuff no matter how much misandry they involve themselves in you cannot talk about zaddy but you can talk about black men the cynthia g bang yang okay is a prime example how many remember when she used to call white folk white albinoid devil who how many people remember that when she used to stand on their heads and then that's when her channel started getting flagged and all of this, you know what I'm saying? And all that type of stuff. She was almost out of a channel until she pivoted and then started talking real reckless about black men. Now she'll never get flagged. She'll never get flagged. She got more than a hundred thousand subscribers. She got plenty of subscriber base. She, she, you know, she ain't worried about it. All she got to do is keep talking crazy about black men and talk about how she need to do you, uh, black women who get pregnant with black boys should delete them out of their womb and all of that type of stuff. Don't nobody say nothing. That's not supposed to be hate speech. That don't go against the guidelines. Let a man say that. Let a black man say anything even remotely close to that. Okay. Men were able to see the vitriol and the, the, the nastiness of black women they began to appeal to the logic and empathy of black women and that got shot down then black men years ago came to social media and other platforms and and created what is now known as the manosphere specifically the black manosphere is what i'm referring to and they came together to solve the myriad of problems that face them, not going to get into a Manosphere history lesson. Because the point is that one of the things that they were going to try to do was actually, once they hashed out things among themselves, was invite Black women back to the table so that they could have these conversations because the men were still in problem-solving mode. How are we going to solve this issue? It must be an issue of the women being unaware of the exact effect that the actions and things that they have are having on us, on the family, on the community, on themselves. So we as men have to actually educate them as to what's going on because it's got to be an issue of ignorance, right? Because there ain't no way that they know the, know what we know and understand what we understand and see the outcome, how we see the outcome and still doing this foolishness. So let's go ahead and get the stats 
We're going to get the anecdotal evidence. We're going to get the historical evidence. We're going to lay this stuff out because we're trying to solve this problem. Me and a natural problem solvers. But the other thing that women didn't count on was that me and a natural problem solvers. See, what the women believed was that the men were going to keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying to fix them. One of the uh, little talked about aspects of problem solving is to understand when a problem cannot be resolved by you. That's another uh, 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 piece in the arsenal of male problem solving. See, once they realize, especially when you're dealing with people rather than situations or things, when you're dealing with people, there's an added element of the willingness of that person, right? So a man understand that if a car break down, there is an answer to it, whether he know that answer or not. He knows somebody know that answer or it's a way to find that answer. So he's not going to stop trying to solve that problem because that problem is, is static. It's not dynamic. It's static. So there's an answer to that. And it's logical. And he's going to find it. So he'll plug away all day for days if he has to, weeks if he has to. He'll pour over that problem because there, it, it can be solved. He understand that. He just got to get to the solution. Okay. But when you're talking about people, see, there comes a point where people resist problem solved and if they resisted too much what it what it boiled down to is this person doesn't want that problem solved and so now it becomes an issue of i'm not going to keep wasting my energy on a person that don't want to have a problem solved i can't save who don't want to be saved right because what the men came to understand is oh no you know what's oh you know what's going on Oh, but see, but, but even before it came to this point, the men were trying to solve that problem before they saw the women getting out of line. They stopped marrying you. They stopped marrying you at the rate that they were marrying you in hopes that you would figure out that men weren't giving you the commitment that they know women want. But y'all kept on acting a fool. Then they, they gave you less marriage, but kind of kept the sex participated in the hookup culture and you acted even a bigger fool then they say okay well we'll do less hookups and you're still acting a fool then the men said well we won't give you children like we've been giving you because you delete them anyway and you still acted a fool act like you didn't care we don't need no man we don't care we got it blah blah blah, blah. then they stop they stop having children with you one to one and they stop sending their sperm to the sperm bank you can't go get that either then you complain about that but you won't act right and so now the men are saying well you know what let's completely leave the field we don't even have to play this game with you at all let's just go i'm going back into the locker room i don't know what you're gonna do but i'm headed back to the locker room now you standing on the field looking stupid because you don't understand why they won't play with you no more. And the men are done playing. That's the whole concept behind passport bros and everything, that they are done playing with you. Now you notice it's a bigger issue now that the men are like, uh, er, knock it off. We done. Now, now that the men have walked off, now you understand it's a bigger issue. Now you know that there's a bigger game at play. Girl, if y'all don't knock that off. You eagerly participated in the game that was played. But a few of you hyenas are cunning enough to see the writing on the wall, but it's too late. And I don't want to hear this, this, this whining and crying that y'all are doing it. Of course it worked. Of course the plan of white supremacy worked. It worked mainly because you worked the plan. The plan worked. Because you worked the plan. You worked that plan. And you was working that plan. You've been working that plan for 70 years. Now you surprised that the plan worked and the outcome is what? And you surprised at the results? We've been telling you what the results was going to be. You still was listening to Zaddy about what the results was going to be. Now you mad. Now you shaking in your boots. Now you worry about, oh man, black men, you know what I'm saying? White men told y'all, white supremacy told you that as long as you kept black men under the subjugation, under you, excuse me, that they were, uh, they weren't going nowhere. See, that white supremacy told you black men were never going to get up the backbone to get up and go nowhere. 
that they will always take your abuse, that they will always take no, your neglect, that they will always take your hatred and always take your vitriol and return it with love. And that they would never leave. You would always be able to use them as a punching bag. And black and black men are this our men. Black men are men. And like, okay, no, we're done. We're done. Because now we understand that you know what you're doing. It's not an issue of ignorance. You actually prefer this. You like what's happening. Okay, well, fine. We'll take our seed and go elsewhere and build another community. And we'll just leave you to rot with your zaddy like you wanted to do. Of course it worked. Of course white supremacy's plan worked. You worked it. Teamwork make the dream work. Head on over to crimsoncure.com and pick up your copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine. All right. You definitely want to get your hands on this wonderful work. All right. So head on down into the description box and click the link for crimsoncure.com to pick up your copy of that book. Also, we are holding Black Lives Matter accountable and the link to the petition is also in the description box as well. So sign it, share it, and contribute to it. And jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host of Crimson Cure and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.